Wimpod. Am I going to pronounce it correct? Am I going to pronounce the evolution correctly for this or incorrectly? I'll do it correctly. So this evolves into Goliosopod. What's going on, YouTube? I'm Pokemon Challenges. I'm probably the best Nuzlocker in the world. And today, after my reactions to Jaden Animation, we're going to be reacting to Young Young Tails' first Nuzlocke today. And we're going to be looking at it from the professional 4,000 hour Nuzlocke experience perspective. We're going to be evaluating everything that happened. Not to hate on the creator or um, uh, say that they're bad or anything, but for you as an educational resource to learn about the more technical side of nuzlocking and what you think is interesting about it. So if that sounds cool to you, maybe this video is for you. Also, if you want to see me do more reactions like that or high level nuzlock gameplay, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video. I don't know anything about this creator. I've never seen any of their videos, so I'm curious to see what is going to happen here. All right, before we begin, I need to go over a few things. I have never done a Nuzlocke before, and I guess right. this technically still doesn't count as one. I don't know. It depends how strict the whole Nuzlocke community is. Is that me? Real talk, is that me? Chat, chat, is that me? It doesn't have facial hair. True. That's a good point. The 10 year olds who watch my videos are already pissed because I paused within the first 50. The people who watch my reaction videos always get really pissed when I <laughs> pause the video. Because <laughs> they apparently just want to watch the video again, but with a face next to it. Basically, I abide by all the rules of a typical Nuzlocke where I name them, so I get attached, and if they faint, I can't use them anymore. Fair. But the additions that I add is that I can catch any bug type I want. Okay. If it faints, I can't use any of that same species. So, cool. under these rules, I can technically run out of Pokemon. Got it? Good. Grab your popcorn, use the restroom, get comfy, because we're in it for the long haul, baby. All right, so he, he asked how strict the Nuzlocke community is on these things, and as uh, one of the leading figures in this community, I'm always big on saying, I don't care how you play your runs whatsoever. It does not matter. The one thing that you should play your runs by if you do a Nuzlocke is having a well-groomed crotch with the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. That's right, today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Again, they make the performance package 4.0 for you. You know, the holiday season coming up, there's dry heater air everywhere, everything's itchy, everything sucks. Traveling for the holidays, spending time with your partner maybe. You wanna keep yourself well-groomed and feeling nice downstairs, you know what I mean? And to keep yourself well-groomed downstairs, uh, Manscaped's got the performance package 4.0 for you, which comes with the main star of the show, the main event, the Lawnmower 4.0. This electric razor with skin safe technology, super safe, no way you can cut yourself here. It's got an LED light at the front that you can use to make everything a little bit more visible. It's also completely waterproof, you can use it in the shower. And it's got a really clever travel locking feature, you know? If you're going through TSA or something, you got this in your bag, it starts buzzing. Everybody's going to think you got a Nokia phone in your bag. No, 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 it's just a razor, but that's not going to happen for you. You're not going to be in an embarrassing situation like that. Just tap the button three times. One, two, three. It's travel locked. Click it. Nothing happens. Now, if we click three times again. One, two, three. It's unlocked. Works again. Really nice. Really clever feature. But that's not the only thing you get in the package. You also get this wonderful travel bag for all your toiletries, uh, including the lawnmower, but also including uh, a fantastic, comfortable pair of boxers that Manscaped gives to you, and the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. It's fantastic. It's a great deal. Go down to manscaped.com slash Pokemon Challenges. Use my link in the description of the comments for 25% off. Thank you so much for Manscaped for sponsoring today's video, and I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into what's actually important for Nuzlocking. You make your rule set to where it's the most fun for you personally, okay? The more fun you have it, the better, the more better your rules are, okay? So if he has more fun catching bug types, then it's a Nuzlocke, and it's a good one. So, absolutely uh, wonderful. I'm excited to see, uh, to see him use a lot of bug types. Bug types are super fun to use in Nuzlocke's. Let's see where this goes. It's a sword and shield Nuzlocke, which I don't have super a lot of experience with, but at least some. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Let's see where this goes. Oh, yeah. Also, I should mention that I've never played this before, so that should be interesting. Here goes my Pokemon kind of sort of, but not really Nuzlocke. A long time ago, I witnessed a finals Pokemon match where the upcoming challenger took the throne as the new champion. And ever since then, that very moment motivated me to one day embark on my own journey. So wait, Today it's was the Jaden Animations, guys. Hop became Woo! official Pokemon trainers. Hop's older brother, Leon, was none other than the undefeated champion of Galar, and he was going to endorse both of us so that way we could compete in the Pokemon gym. Did you guys know that Leon is the undefeated champion of the Galar region? I didn't actually know this. I don't know if he'll mention it in the video or not, but he, uh, Leon is actually the undefeated champion in the Galar region. It's... 
Have I mentioned that actually? That Leon, never mind. Challenge. And I was like super hyped because I wanted to, for the longest time, assemble the most powerful bug team. Don't bug types are pretty powerful. Me. I like bug Pokemon, all right? Nothing Unfortunately, Leon didn't have any to start out with, so I chose Sobble. I named Sops. Sobble, pretty good, uh, pretty good Pokemon. Water types are usually pretty good water types or a great type for Nuzlocke. I always advise you to uh, pick the fire type when, if you don't know a lot about the game. Fire types are pretty rare and pretty powerful. Um, so if you already have a powerful run out the gate, one out the gate, that's beautiful. So yeah, I, that, that's usually my advice. Grass types are usually just kind of bad and also pretty common. And then water types are good but common. So usually every good water type you can you can trade for another good water type in your run. So uh, usually advice for taking the fire type, but starting with whatever you want is usually fine for Nuzlocke. My very first Galarian Pokemon. For us, we didn't find the Wulu, but some weird giant dog. This animation it was is pretty random stuff. But we did really end up finding good. The Take your sheep. God All damn. Right. Now we can. This is like super high quality. Route one, we ran into some of the new locals. Ugh, why is everything so weird? Oh, oh, thank goodness! Finally, something that I actually recognize. <laughs> It's cute. What happened to you? It's I a wasn't cute mon. I'm sure if there were any bugs in the area, but sure enough, I found this thing called a grubbin and I named it Woomps. Decent encounter, honestly. Not very good early, but uh, you know what? Later on, it's going to be just fine. <laughs> <gasps> and just like that, I had Sops, Woomps, and Blinks. We didn't get that far. In Blip bug. Oh, this is where my uh, where I lack a little bit of knowledge in the in the Gen 8 Nuzlocke, but I, I think um Blipbug is actually quite good in, in this Nuzlocke. The final evolution of both of these bug types is pretty great. Both Vikavolt and Orbeetle are pretty fantastic. You don't get them super late either. ...into the journey when Hops challenged us yet again. Anyways, fun fact, Blinks evolved from the battle, so yep. thanks for the free XP and money. Well, why thank you, random people I just met. I feel like I didn't really need your permission, but I appreciate the support. <laughs> Optimotostoxin. True. We arrive at something called the wild area, and that is where I run into a Carablast. And if you don't know, Carablast's evolved form as Cavalier was like super cool, super yep. strong, True. and would make a great addition to the team. And I Steel really wanted great. one because I've never had one before. But then I unfortunately remember that you need to trade for it, and I didn't have anyone to trade with. So this thing was pretty much useless. So Moving along the Yeah, Carablast, if you don't do trade evolution, is like one of the worst Pokemon you can get. Uh, people always ask me how I do the wild area in Nuzlocke, because um, it's it's first encounter on every route, right, for, for Nuzlocke usually. The way I will play the wild area in, in Sword and Shield and in Nuzlocke is I will literally actually blindfold myself as I run into the area of the wild area and run into a random Pokemon. We're just going to head straight down until we find a Pokemon, right? Not a fan of the music, I'm not gonna lie. Did I find a Pokemon yet? And then every area of the wild area counts as a as a different encounter, like as a different route to encounter Pokemon on. Which is actually nice because you can kind of space them out because a lot of them will have too high level Pokemon for you to catch. So you can kind of avoid those and then come back later and get more encounters there. That's how I handle the wild area in Sword and Shield in my Nuzlocke. Along the way in some cave, Wombs evolved into something interesting. And then I met this. Listen, okay. Along in some cave, Wombs evolved into something. Listen, <laughs> I was convinced I still kind of am convinced that this Pokemon is a bus. <laughs> okay. I know it's like a f battery or whatever, and there's a puzzle in Sun and Moon where you arrange them because they're batteries, but th come on, dude. It's even got a windshield. It's got, it's got wheels. How is this not a bus? And then I met this bundle of joy. Bade. We just I had love a nice Bade. little discussion Orbeed. about his personality, and then after exiting he has a really the cave, good theme I found too. a Joltik I named Lucas. It's Ooh, another, so he gets another bug electric next to Vikavolt here. You don't want to be stacking types too much in your Nuzlocke, obviously, when you're building teams, right? Galvantula is fantastic uh, in Nuzlocke. Um, Compound Eye is Thunder, so Compound Eye raises your accuracy, and then your Thunders are going to be more accurate. Is actually like a really good combo. Galvantula gets some pretty crazy moves. It's a really good mon. I think better than Vikavolt because it's got the speed as well. Together with Wombs and Blinks, bada bing, bada boom. Holy crap, this is what Dynamax Pokemon battles are like. The first gym badge 
was ours. I think Dynamax is so stupid. I'm sorry. It's, a, it's not a cool mechanic like, at all. It's so dumb. On the way to the next town, we were having a light conditioning session to get Lucas up to par with the rest of the team. And you know what? I must say, things are really starting to look up for my bug team. And I was sure that Lucas would add so much value, especially considering the fact yep. that the next gym was water type. Yep. We got this in the back. Wobbuffet incoming. Lucas, no! A stupid wild Wobbuffet was able to perfectly counter Lucas's attack and cause the team's first death. So this is actually a very, very dangerous Pokemon Nuzlocke. Even for me, like I died, especially wild Wobbuffets like so much it's actually really scary right wabafet has shadow tag so you can't run from it and then it only carries like mirror coat and counter which will pretty much always kill you if he hits you with it because wabafet has really high hp and low defenses so it will take a very large hp amount of damage when you damage it and deal double that back to you so th that's why mirror coats and counters from wabafets are like it especially effective compared to other Pokemon. If you hit this with a move, it's probably going to kill you back if it if it guesses um, counter or mirror code correctly. Now, obviously, there's ways to play around it. You can poison it. Uh, you can use fixed damage moves like Seismic Toss or something like that, where you can predict the, the damage that's going to come back. And then if you have if you're using healing items, you can heal up in between those. That way you don't have to worry about crits or anything either. You can have something that can one-shot it, obviously, like a very powerful bug type or, or dark type or something like that. But that's can, they can be pretty hard. These things are very bulky. They have a lot of HP. You can use Taunt if you want to. You can use a Substitute. And then obviously there is, um, you could use a special move with a dark type because dark types are unaffected by Mirror Coat. Or you could use a physical move with a ghost type because ghost types are unaffected by counter. Those would be the main ways to like play around it. Obviously, and then ghost types can obviously also run from shadow tag. The problem though is like th those are pretty specific things that you need to prepare for Wobbuffets. And once you're in it uh, on a fight, you can't switch out, right? The best thing you can do is have one of those things prepared, one of those plans prepared when you go into an area that you know has wild Wobbuffets. But obviously, if you're playing blind, I mean, you can't really. Usually in these reviews, I try to review what the player could have done better in the situation they were in to not lose a Pokemon. And honestly, in this situation, I don't think Young Young could have done anything to prevent this loss except gotten lucky. So I'm pretty sure in his situation, I also would have lost this Pokemon. We ran in shame. Lucas wasn't with us for long, and we may not be able to get revenge now, but Lucas's death gave us the spark to really zoom through our next challenges. Welcome to the team, Zweeps. Ah, yes. Cutie Fly is actually all, dude, there's so many good bug types in this game. This is a really cool game to do a bug type only run on. Uh, Rabambi um, is actually a pretty powerful Pokemon. I'm pretty sure it gets Quiver Dance. You can set up with it. Uh, it's, it's very good. Uh, a lot of really good encounters in this bug type only run. It's actually pretty great. Fair, very fair. I don't really like you, dude, and your attitude sucks. Also, where the heck do you think you're going? Wimpod. Am I going to pronounce it correct? Am I going to pronounce the evolution correctly for this or incorrectly? I'll do it correctly. So this evolves into Goliosapod, which has some pretty interesting tools for nuzlocking as well. I don't have a lot of experience with it. The ability can be really annoying at, time at times, but first impression is such a good move. It's got really good stats too. Uh, water bug is a great typing as well. This is a cool encounter. <laughs> There's so many goddamn cool bug types in this game. I'm actually really surprised. He picked such a great game to do a pure bug type run on. Harold. Our next gym challenge was Kabu, home of the bane to almost God, this, all my bug this types. This artwork looks my so good. Member, so Harold, goddamn good. was pretty much useless here, so Sots was going to have to carry this one. Going through the challenges where we had to team up with randos and catch Pokemon for points, I thought it was a good idea to use my recently evolved Sweeps since it was the best choice to clear each one. But on the final challenge, Sweeps was backstabbed Ooh. and perished. <laughs> Okay, I honestly felt pretty guilty about what happened. But how the heck was I supposed to know that the other trainer was going to betray me like that? You That's monster. That's true. We can I think I got surprised by that too on my playthrough. That's another thing that you just... That's honestly another... But I guess like having your bug type out against a bunch of fire types that are getting sent out is probably not a good idea anyway. He acknowledges that too. There's not much to say to this. The mo most mistakes that you make in, in Nuzlocke and most deaths that you have is in, in hindsight is because you were lazy. You didn't grind enough or um, you... Send out a Pokemon, thought it was fine, didn't really think about it. Um, yeah, just uh, try to always be attentive 
and uh, try to make the best choice that you can at every moment. Sop took out the first two Pokemon pretty easily, and then it was time for Kabu's ultimate Pokemon, Sentiscorch. Finally, before oh, my artwork. own eyes was one of the coolest bug type Pokemon I have ever seen. Easily one of my favorites. Yep. Such an impressive beast, and I was super jealous. But now I can unleash my secret weapon. It was time to show my fifth Pokemon. <laughs> been hidden way too long, but it's time for you to come out. Let's go, Grievous! Oh, did he get his own? Nice. Basically, a while back on Route 3, after asking around, I caught a Sizzlipede, and you know what? I absolutely loved it. Trained it and primed for a moment just like this. I'm pretty sure I remember using this in my run, and it wasn't fantastic. Um, Firebug is a pretty volatile type. You have a lot of weaknesses, but specifically for this fight, it can be good, right? It's definitely an interesting mon. Firebug is... It's definitely cool. Like, I don't think we can deny that. Uh, pretty damn cool. This. Now let's see who sent to Scorch was better. It was an intense battle between the two fiery centipedes. Based on appearance alone, it would have seemed like Kabu sent to Scorch had the upper hand since it was much bigger and unfortunately cooler looking. But Grievous's flame was fueled by the innocent blood of Sweeps. And in the end, that is what gave us victory. Yes! God, that animation oh, was good. I'm so proud of you, Grievous. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if he had flash that. fire on his. Double yes. After some training, Harold really toughened up by evolving into a Galissapod. Well, how about that? And then we picked up Skarner the Skorupai along the way to Hammerlock City. He's no sweeps, but I'm sure he'll be useful for something. Shortly after, I ran Skorupai into Skorupai is definitely once. correct, but I don't know. I think it's Galissapod. Golioso pod, pretty sure. Again, who was feeling pretty, pretty sure. down about himself because apparently he lost to Bade in a Pokemon battle, so it was up to me to be the good friend that I am and help him feel better by beating him up. From there, it was on to the fighting type gym where Blinks got real psyched up, if you know what I God, mean. God, Orbeetle is Clean so strong, too. But after you get battle, so many good outside, bug types in this game, man. Bade, Mr. Ooh, this I is a really fun idea chairman. for a run. Ooh, I'm so special. Ooh, everyone is beneath me. Ooh, thought it was okay to blast some hole in some ancient sacred. Listen, Bede is just because misunderstood. Is okay. Are you sure your name isn't like Karen? I tried to give him another. He's just misunderstood. With my starter, but then he ended up getting a critical one hit by Solus's Psybeam. <sighs> Of all people to lose a Pokemon to, you've got to be kidding me. I just got you. Okay, but like, you did leave in a poison type on a psychic type. It's really easy to, to blame critical hit luck, right? You, you should be aware of like the damage that a critical hit can do to you. And on a, sc on a Scorupi versus like pretty much any psychic type that's going to Psybeam you, you're probably going to die to a crit. As always, with this reaction's main takeaway, be aware of your crit damage, play around the crit. Crit damage is times 2 from every gen up to 5, and then starting at 6, crit damage is times 1.5. Track the damage that your opponent deals to you, multiply that by 1.5 or 2 in your head. Be aware of what he can do to you. Moving on, replacing Skarner was Jerry the Dwebble I found and quickly evolved. Look, I was running out of bodies to fill these Pokeballs with, so I had no other choice. As he did not put Durant on his team. Book. Durant is so... Dude, Steel types are insanely strong in Nuzlocke's. They're so, so good. Steel bug types, whoo, and Durant too. Now, the problem with Durant is it does often have Hustle, which makes a lot of your moves miss, but also makes them more powerful. But on a bulky Pokemon like that, you can honestly afford it. This Pokemon is busted. It's so, it's so fast. It deals so much damage and has an impressive typing. Uh, if it doesn't have Hustle, it's definitely the best Pokemon that he can pick for, that he can pick on this team right now. And even if it has Hustle, it's still really, 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 really good. This is an insane Pokemon. I was running out of bodies to fill these Pokeballs with, so I had no other choice. I was beginning to be concerned about Woomp since this whole time it hasn't evolved yet. I really wondered if I was, like, missing something. But shortly afterwards, Woomp's rummaged through my bag and found a Thunderstone I had earlier and evolved. I have cool. this suspicious feeling that the next gym leader, Opal, primarily uses fairy types. Just a hunch. And, you know, gee, it would have been real nice to have somebody who could deal with fairy types right about now if it wasn't for a certain person. But even so, Woomps and Grievous managed to sweep right through because fairy types are stupid. Except for you, Sweeps. You're good.
on the I actually agree fairy types are stupid I think they're really broken like there's no reason can, can I just say this real quick yeah Durand would have been insane in this fight by the way as a steel type but but can we just say why does fairy resist bug <laughs> There's fairy was already so good when they introduced it. I don't understand why they had to also make it resist bug Bug wasn't a good attacking type to begin with it did not need another type that resisted it fairy did not need another resistance It's so good. Like it's such a good type uh, Whatever the way to the next town another explosion goes off Sonia and the old professor lady are there and they give some explanation about two brothers Darkest day, giant Pokemon running rampant, really giving me some Attack on Titan vibes. So I left them to go deal with that, and I moved on to Route 8 where I picked up Nom Nom the Snom. Gordy was the sixth. Snom gym. is very cute, and honestly, Frostmoth is actually not even that terrible. It's got a good ability, but it's still an Ice type, and Ice types really suck. Like, they're really, really bad. You get no resistances from being an Ice type, except for to Ice. And you get so many weaknesses. Uh, he's got a lot of Pokemon that are very weak to rock right now. This fight's probably gonna... He really needs to rant on this team <laughs> for this fight. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Use rock-type Pokemon. But they quickly sank under the brute force of Harold and Sops. Okay, fair. Oh yeah, and Jerry spamming Dig. Then fair. it was on to Pierre. Alright, well, this gym uses nothing but a bunch of dark types. So, wait right here, Nom Nom. Blinks will watch you. We'll be right back. Give me that! Okay, let's go. Is that an orb? Okay, two times could just be a coincidence, but three times? Turns out giant Pokemon are spawning all over the place. Fear of Titan's rising. Can we talk about how they had literally this catastrophic event in Sword and Shield happen where Gigantamax Pokemon, Dynamax Pokemon were apparently t attacking cities and they didn't bother to make a cutscene for that? You're literally just told about it? <laughs> It was so cringe, dude. Like, even X and Y had the f houses in the one town flipping upside down. This game had nothing, man. Oh, it could have been so sick, too. It could have been such a cool cutscene. God damn, this game actually had, like, potential, too. God damn it. I had this feeling that this was only the beginning of something really bad that maybe I should help. But nah, they told me to go focus on getting my last batch. <laughs> okay, then. And that might be a challenge, because the last gym is home to Rayhan and his dragon Pokemon, which are known to be tough, resistant to most types, and are pretty versatile with their moveset. This video is just going to be me ranting about Sword and Shield, to be honest. And then you get slapped in the face in this game by every gym being really, really good and really hype, and you're like, oh my god, it's a dragon gym in, a, in, in, in like a medieval fortress. What, what could they possibly, what cool gym puzzle could they come up with for this? And it's literally just an empty room that you do double battles in. It's actually so mind-blowing that it, they literally like ran out of budget at the end of the game and just didn't put a bunch of stuff in. It's... Whew, okay. It's fine. This fight's going to be tough for him. Uh, I, I guess he has um, Frostmoth, which is going to do well, but it is a double battle and there's like rock-type attacks and stuff coming, so curious to see how he handles this. It was kind of a good news, bad news situation. The good news is, is that Nom Nom received 10,000 grams of friendship to evolve and give us the ice advantage. The bad news is, is that she is literally the definition of a glass cannon. Meaning, yes, Nom Nom big strong against dragon types. True. But if Nom Nom touch candle or pebble, which dragons are more than capable of throwing, yep. Nom Nom go bye bye. So Very good analysis in, of the, the ice bug type there. Had I agree. One objective on their mind. Protect Nom Nom. This time it was in the form of a double battle, and making sure they didn't get any chance to gain momentum, Harold and Nom Nom made quick work of his Flygon and Gigalith. Nice. But then came out his big bad Duraludon. This thing is actually really hard to deal with in Nuzlocke. You've gotta be kidding me. Duraludon was literally the love child of Godzilla and a skyscraper. What, yep. what could we possibly do against a building? I quickly switched Harold for Blinks, hoping that he could put it to sleep and then have Nom Nom finish it off with an Aurora Beam. But at the last moment, Blinks became paralyzed from the Sandaconda, and Nom Nom's Ooh. attack wasn't enough to take down the Dorelodon. Yeah. And before I could switch both of them out, Blinks was smashed by a Honestly, with a team comp like this, it's just going to be really hard to deal with this. You need like a like a Dynamax fighting attack or something to deal with Dorelodon. Steel Dragon is an insane typing. Um, This is going to be a tough one. I wonder how he gets out of this. Stonewall. You did well, Blinks. You did your job. 
Sops and Jerry came in, and even though they both became paralyzed by the Sandaconda, Jerry couldn't land a single dig, they were able to stall out Duraludon's Dynamax form, giving okay. Harold the opportunity to come back in and brick break the crap out of it, and finally deal with that pesky snake. Fair. The last gym badge was ours. Not gonna lie, again, on another death, I have to say here, I'm, given the team that he had, I'm not really sure. There's obviously always like good switches you can do if you predict that the AI is gonna use a certain move and what you want to switch into, like switching uh, proactively like into into moves that you think they're going to use on that turn. Um, but he didn't have a lot of resistances to the, the moves that were coming out and stuff in this situation, and man, Dynamax moves are really, really powerful. So, yeah, I, I, I think one thing, one, 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 one piece of advice I can give, for especially if it's going to be a double battle and you know it's going to be a hard one, every, learn, every Pokemon in the game learns Protect, and usually you have access to Protect TMs pretty early in most games. Um, so teaching Protect to like pretty much every Pokemon on your team for a tough double battle like this is like usually a good idea because it can, it can you allow you to like shift a lot of um, a lot of momentum in your favor using those moves. Superpowered Durant would have been a good Pokemon to use in this fight, but we lost Blinks. Marnie and her dark Pokemon were up first, and this is honestly the best time as any to debut the newbie. So I brought out Gaia. Yes, he actually got it. it nice. Formerly useless. <laughs> yep. That's right. And stacked with a sword stance, Gaia became a true powerhouse and swept the entire team. Then we had. I'm glad he's already on the uh, on the setup move train because goddamn, they're good. Yeah, sweeping uh, opponents with setup moves is a very very important in core strategy in those like swords dance, dragon dance, nasty plot stuff like that. Super super good. Also, if you're using items, X items are insane. <laughs> Uh, so, so good. Yeah. At one final match between me and my rival Pop, eh, you probably already know how that went. Sops came out for one last fight, and we ended the rivalry. Yep, it really was his last fight. And honestly, not bringing Sops into the final match was probably one of the hardest decisions I had to make so far. My very first Pokemon, and the one that has watched over all of his teammates and saw them grow into the team they are now. But I believed with this team, even Jerry, we had the best chance of winning. It's a good team. Sops will be with us in spirit. God, a lot of stuff cool. happened. Now nice. we have come face to face with champion Leon. Every battle, everything we have been through has led us to this moment. It was time to show the world just how powerful my bug Pokemon truly are. And <laughs> never mind, Rose is evil, and apparently the darkest day has begun. Well, that sure complicates things. Way to read the room, dude. No, this video's long as it is. Whatever, I will go save the world, I guess. Using 200 IQ, Hops was pretty, was pretty sure pretty that funny. the dog we ran into at the very beginning was important and could help us. So we headed back to our hometown to find it. And trekking through the creepy woods, we don't find the dog, but a rusty old sword and shield. I guess those will have to do. We rush back to Hammerlock City's power plant and we find Chairman Rose going off about Galler's power supply crisis that's potentially coming in 10 years. And to stop it, he summoned this Eternatus thing, hoping he could control it and harness its power. You summoned a what now? Just my opinion, man. But a plan involving control of a legendary being with powers beyond understanding usually doesn't end up going well. Basically, Fair. your plan is stupid. Rose didn't like that, and he was going to try to stop me with his team full of steel Pokemon. So I left He's got Grievous a pretty powerful team, but yeah, you can sweep it pretty easily and if you have the right moments. What the heck is that? No, 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 no. That's a Yu-Gi-Oh monster, <laughs> not a Pokemon. True. What kind of Pokemon would look like that? Uh, uh, Rusty Sword and Shield. The dogs show up, merge with the stuff, and we defeat Internatus, where I catch it with a teeny tiny Pokeball. Crisis of This birth. was pretty anime. Three I really like the, um... After one of the largest the, uh, tensions ever. You know, saving the world. We are finally the dog's showing up for that final match. fight in the game. That was cool. Here we go. Today we finally face off against Leon. This is actually one of the harder champion fights in the series, in my opinion. He has a lot of really damn good Pokemon. It's a tough fight. Doing it with only bug types is especially scary. Pretty sure he can do it here. It looks like he has an answer for pretty much everything. Yeah, I think he's got this. The Charizard is a little concerning, I think. And then also, like Haxorus setting up can be a little bit scary, but I think he's got this. Woom stuck out with a quick claw boost and was able to take out both Aegislash and Rhyperior. Okay, nice. Don't ask me how many Sneasels I needed to get through to find one. Leon's Dragapult was a tough one, though. I was hoping that Nom Nom would be fast enough to take it out, but Nom Nom was outsped. God, the animation is so good. Door. 
I'm sorry, Nom Nom. We couldn't protect you that time. Grievous came out yeah. and was able to coil This is why I'm not using a fan of- the, 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 This is why I'm not a fan of using Frost well Moth in this situation. For some healing. It's just too And weak. then Gaia was able to win head-to-head -head against his Haxorus. And then nice. finally, his last Pokemon. Charizard. But even though we outnumbered him 5 to 1, I didn't feel any better considering the fact that his Charizard still had pretty much every advantage over all my Pokemon. To deal with his Charizard, I had three choices. Harold, who could hopefully beat Charizard with water attacks, Wooms with electric attacks, and then Jerry with rocks. I sent out Makes Harold sense. first, hoping that he could end it right then and there, but Charizard got the first strike, and with a powerful air blast, Harold was one shot. God damn. Oh crap. I mean, there's I three turns of Gigantamax, right? Another Quick Claw boost Thunderbolt, but that too failed, and Wooms was burned to a crisp. Two of my strongest Pokemon and my best chances to beat Charizard were both wiped out in an instant. Yeah, and remember it's buffing itself too with these with these Dynamax attacks, right? This is really scary. At this point, victory was very bleak. If Jerry dies, Charizard will have no trouble defeating my remaining Pokemon. Yep. And it will be over. Jerry. So what you can do here, right, is it, there's one more turn of Gigantamax. Um, you probably, you know the S Cavalier is going to die no matter what, no matter if it's a Gigantamax or not, right? So you, you go into the S Cavalier for one turn, sacrifice it, like it's the, it's the end of the game, right? It's the last fight. You want to sacrifice like as much as you can <laughs> and to, to increase your chances of winning. So if you sacrifice the S Cavalier in that situation to stall a Gigantamax turn, you can then get your Crustle in when it's no longer in Gigantamax. That seems like the correct play here. You weren't our strongest team member. Uh, Crustle even has Sturdy, right? Or I think, does it have it half of the time? But if this has Sturdy, um, it'll live on 1 HP and, and probably kill the Charizard if it's no longer in Dynamax. I think that's the play here. And often the butt of many jokes, but right now, you are our last hope. Oh, we're screwed. Jerry stepped onto the battlefield and Charizard raised a stone wall that came crashing down and staring into the face of imminent defeat. Well, I might as well surrender at this point. Spare the rest of my Pokemon. But Jerry was still standing. Sturdy, right? I was just, I, I don't know. Not even Talking sturdy, it's just, defense, it just has good the defense. Fact that Jerry had a giant rock to protect him. No, it was like the true power of friendship. This was our chance. I made Jerry jumbo sized and we showed that oversized Barney what it's like to get squashed by a giant rock. And it was at that moment we won. Nice. We completed the Pokemon Sword, kinda sorta, but not really Nuzlocke. It was a bittersweet moment since Gaia, Grievous, and Jerry were the only ones who survived. But even so, this victory goes just as much to all the other team members who brought us to where we are now. Lucas, Sweeps, Skarner, Blinks, Sops, Nom Nom, Harold, and Woomps. You are all champions. True. Some might say that this is a good place to stop and be satisfied. But now that I'm here, I realize that my journey isn't over. Achieving this title of Bug Champion of Galar is not an ultimate goal, but a mere stepping stone in my life. So with my team, I am setting out to continue on my journey, because I am sure somewhere out there, more challenges are waiting for me. And I say, bring it on. That's pretty cute. This was awesome. Uh, the animation was incredible. Yeah fantastic video i really really enjoyed the animation uh, it was super entertaining it was pretty funny and he played well as well winning winning a blind nuzlocke of a game like sword and shield with honestly the restriction of using bug types a lot is very very impressive as well i'm looking forward to seeing what more nuzlocke content we get to see from this channel yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it as well i'm really bad at outro so i guess just like subscribe and leave a comment or something i would really appreciate it bye